Praise his name. Romans chapter 8 and verse 32. It's real good to have Eddie with us. Sister Imogene was so happy. Not that her other kids is here, but that Eddie's here. No, I'm just a picket. I'm just a picket. I've done, the sisters have done told me, Eddie. They've done fill me in all bad. Yeah. That's a good thing, though, ain't it? All right. Romans chapter 8 and verse 32. He that spired not. I want you to catch these words. Every word is powerful here this morning. Speaking of God, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Mark chapter 9. Mark 9 and 31. Powerful verse. Jesus speaking as he taught his disciples. Verse 31 of Mark 9. For he taught his disciples and said unto them, The Son of Man is delivered into the hands of man. And they shall kill him. And after that he is killed, he shall rise the third day. Flip over with me to chapter 10. They are confused and Jesus is continually to answer their questions in 10 and 33. And reminding them of what is about to take place. Saying, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem. And the Son of Man shall be delivered unto the chief priests and unto the scribes. And they shall condemn him to death and shall deliver him to the Gentiles. They shall mock him, shall scourge him, they shall spit upon him and shall kill him. And the third day he shall rise again. Father, I your word this morning. I pray, God, that you help me to speak just the things that are needed. Thank you for your spirit and for your presence that has been so real already in our midst. And I pray, God, that you touch each heart and each life here, those who listen now and who will listen later. I pray that the message will speak to their heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Christ delivered up for us. Jesus Christ was delivered up for you. The devil will try to tell you you're a nobody and you're a nothing, that God is not concerned about you, but look what God done for us. And that He spared not His only Son so that you and I both might have eternal life. Christ delivered us at the cross. At the cross, He delivered me and you. Chapter 4 of Romans, we read through it before several weeks ago as we've been going through the book of Romans, but I just want to rehearse it in hearing quickly this morning. Romans chapter 4 and verse 24. But for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we believe. <coughs> Not if we do so many good works. Not if we straighten our life up. Not if we a different direction. If we believe, all those things I spoke about are good. Christ will do that in you, but you must first believe. You must believe and receive the finished work of the cross. And without that, you can't straighten yourself up. Without that, you can't clean yourself up. Without that, you can't sanctify or set yourself apart without the cross of Calvary. On Him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. If we believe on Him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. The eons of the ages when man created the heavens and the earth. I believe God created all things that are created. All things. If you don't, you have a far greater faith than I do. 
If you look around and see all the wonderful things in this world and you think it happened by an accident, you think just by chance all these things come together, my, 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 no, I see the hand of Almighty God and I see His hand as He created any form and I see God speaking to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as He took man and He formed man and He shaped man out of the dust of the earth and He made man after His image and He said, let us make man after our image. At that moment, Christ knew what it was going to cost him. How do you know that, Brother Doug? Because the Word of God tells us that Christ was the Lamb that was slain from the foundation, from the very beginning of the world. Christ knew what man would do. He knew what it would cost. He knew the cross awaited him. He knew all that. He could have said, Father, wait just a moment. Let's make another creation. Man's going to cost us too much. Man's not worth that. But he looked down in 2023 and he saw me. Sister Kay, he saw you. Brother Brandon, he saw you. And he desired us. Take that, devil. I am desirable. Amen. God wants me. God wants fellowship with me. And Christ and the Holy Ghost and God agreed. And God breathed into man. Oh, hallelujah. The breath of life. And man became a living soul. All the way through the Old Testament, you see the scarlet thread of redemption. You see Christ foretold. And what Jesus Christ would there do upon the cross for you and me. You see, I was born in sin. When Adam and Eve sinned, sin passed upon all men. And when sin came, death came. And with that death, sin and destruction and heartache came to man. But God said, I'm going to make a way. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to put a new heart. The the offerings and the sacrifices, they were good for a time, but they would not change man. They would not make man different. His heart was still a heart of stone. But God said, there's coming a day and there's coming a time that my law is no longer going to be written upon stone, but it's going to be written in your heart. It's going to be written, oh, hallelujah, the Holy Ghost is going to put it in your mind. And the law of the Spirit is going to work daily in your life to lead you and to guide you. All these things pointed to Christ coming. There was no other way. How else could we clean ourselves up? I was reminded a while ago, Sister Norma's got a picture of it if you don't believe me. I was reminded a while ago when I was wa- Well, she got a picture of me washing dishes. While I was wiping tables down, I was reminded. I don't know if Sister Melissa heard me or not. I talk about this a lot. But we take a rag. When you go to the restaurant, they say, let me clean that up for you. And I'm always nice. I don't try to be mean or ugly. But I want to say, how many other tables has that rag wiped? Why don't we just get a napkin and kind of push it off the floor? Huh? Because you can't take something dirty and clean something up. There's no way. There's no, you can't do it. How can I clean my own self up? How can I wash my, how can I atone for my sin? How can I pay for my sins? There's no way. How can I just change my life? I can't do it. But Christ can. By a new and living way. The old things pass away as I believe in Him in the finished work of the cross and all things become new. Brother Doug, I just can't hardly believe that. I can't hardly, can't hardly see how that happens. Believe on Him and watch it happen. Believe on Him and He'll come into your heart and life. Make a difference in your life that you, you never could have seen or never could have realized what a difference Christ makes in your heart and in your life when He changes you and He writes your name down in the book of life and you become a part of the family of God. There was no way I could clean myself up. There was no way that I could deliver myself. But Christ came to deliver me. Christ was delivered upon the cross that I might be delivered. You see, Christ came to this world born of a virgin. Amen? Born of a virgin without sin. Me and you were born into sin. We look at these precious little babies and they are so precious, aren't they? But do you realize they're born into sin? 
We look at them and we say, how innocent. But now when they wanted a bottle, I want you to just stop and think about this for a moment. If they were the size of Brother Danny back there laying in that crib, and they done cried and told you one time they wanted a bottle, I can just see that little baby, if it had the ability, it'd reach up and grab a hold of you, and it'd shake you right hard. You don't think it would? Sure it would. It wants a bottle. It's hungry. Yeah, they're innocent, but they know what they want, don't they? They're just small size. Is, is, is the re- born into sin. We all have been born into sin. And no way around it. I don't care what creed, race, I don't care what family you're born into, I don't care how much your mom or daddy gave to the church, I don't care how sanctified or filled with the Holy Ghost they were, you're born into sin. And there's no way around it but the cross of Calvary and by faith in the finished work therein. No other way. It's not Baptist way, it's not holiness way, it's not Methodist way, it is God's way. And I'm so thankful that He made a way, Pastor Dad, that whosoever will. I'm glad I don't have to pay my way in. I'm glad I don't have to be smart enough to, to, to figure my way out. Because I'd never do it. But I'm so thankful that He made a way. And God said, I'm going to make a way. I'm going to send my Son. And Jesus Christ Himself, the book of Hebrews tells us, made Himself a little lower than the angels, took on the form of man, and He came down and was born that first Christmas day. We think about the cross and all the horrors of the cross, but think about what Christ done. He left glory. He never knew what it was to be hungry. He never knew what it was to be cold. He never knew what it was to depend upon somebody else to meet your needs. He never knew those things. But He came down and was filled with our infirmities, the things that we feel. He knows what we go through with. We have a high priest that has walked where we walk, yet without sin. Lived a spotless, clean, holy life. Why? For you and me. At any moment, the Father would have came and took Him. I see Him as He realizes what is coming up. And He now goes into the garden and He prays. He sees the agony and the anguish that awaits Him. He sees the cross that is before Him. And He knows the pain. Did Christ feel the pain? Yes, Christ felt the pain. Yes, Christ felt the rejection. Yes, Christ felt the hatred that these people had for Him, even though He came to save them, even though He came to bring them to a better place, and yet they despised Him and hate Him and spit upon Him. In the garden He prays there, Lord, not my will, but Thine be done. At that moment, the Father would have sent legions of angels to have delivered Him in a moment. All the Son had to do is say, Father, I can't go on with it. And the Father would have been there for Him. But He loved me and He loved you. Don't ever let the devil hop on your shoulder and tell you God doesn't love you. God's not concerned about you. God doesn't know what you're going through with. Oh, you think about Jesus in that garden. He went all the way for you and for me because He so loved the world that God gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Oh, glory be to God. What a privilege, what a joy to know that He loves me. I like to sing every once in a while to the enemy that He loves me. I like to remind that enemy that God so loved that He gave and He still gives today His grace and His mercy and His goodness and His Spirit today to lead us and guide us. Christ left the garden knowing what awaited. Goes. No man could take Him. How do you know that, Brother Doug? Because look in the garden when they came to get Him. Judas portrayed him with a kiss. 
Look, as they come to get him with their swords and their staffs, and they fall back to their feet. Amen. And Christ willingly goes with them. They take Christ as he willingly is delivered up for us, and they nail him up on the cross. Why, Brother Doug, must he pay that price? God is a just God. We don't hear that often enough. It's got quiet now, but let me tell you again, God is a just God. We don't see much justice in this day and time, do we? You're going to see less as time stands. I've told you some things from this pulpit. I know you didn't believe me, and every day you open the newspaper, you see it happening. They're coming after your kids. I told you that. How many weeks, years ago? And it's here. Justice is something you're not going to see, but my God is a just God. And just as He's full of love, He is also full of justice. And there's an age-old law. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Men try to sweep things under the rug. Politicians. Leaves a nasty taste in your mouth, don't it? Did I say that? They try to sweep things under the rug. They say they're sorry, but they're only sorry because they got caught. But there is only one way whereby sins might be remitted. And that is by the shedding of precious, pure, holy blood. But me and you were born in sin. Christ was not. And there between heaven and earth, as they take my Lord and my Savior, I won't go into great detail, and they nail Him to the cross because you know about the cross. And they nail him to the cross and they set that cross up with a thug and the flesh ribs. As they nail him there, not a bone. Have you ever thought about that? Not one bone was crunched. Why? Because God's word was fulfilled. Amen. Everything fulfilled. Everything spoke years before Christ ever came. Everything, His birth. How do you stage your own birth? And how do you stage crucifixion? You can't do it. You can't do it. Everything, just like the Word of God says. And Christ hung there between heaven and earth. Do you realize, I'll quickly say this, His back is beaten to a bloody pulp. His face is bloody. The beard has been pulled from His face. There's a crown of thorns upon his head. Every breath. The Romans were very cruel. And what the cross done is it so hung an individual that to get air into their lungs, they had to pull themselves up. Actually, what they done when they hung there, they suffocated. And of course, the body will naturally pull oneself up to try to get air inside. Think about every time that Christ pulled himself up. His back that was already beaten rubbed that rugged cross. The nails that were in His hands and His feet. The pain and the agony that He brought Him as He pulled that next breath of our in. Was it the nails that held Him there? Was it the Roman soldiers and those mocking Him standing around that held Him there? What held my Christ on that cross? It was love. It was love for me and love for you because He loved us so much that He was willing to pay that price and there hang and pay the penalty for you and me. Amen. I hear as Christ hangs that day and the hour has now come and He cries out, It is finished. What was He saying? He was saying the price has been paid. Before Christ went to the cross, men had to go to the high priest. There had to be all kinds of rituals and sacrifices and things done. No man could enter in through that veil. The high priest only one time a year could go into the holies of holies and there have communion with God. I want you to realize how much God loves you. 
A lot of people say, oh, I wish I could live back in those days. Not me. I love grace. You might not need grace. You might not love grace. But Brother Brandon, I love grace. I'm thankful that other morning I step out in grace. I'm glad that through the day I walk in grace. I'm glad when I lay down at night, I lay down in grace. I love living in His grace. They had to go to the high priest and only one time a year could he enter into the holies of holies and there enter into the very presence of God there at the mercy seat. But you know what God done as Christ cried out, it is finished as a sign to you and me. He didn't have to, just like He didn't have to roll the stone back so we could look in. But God reached down with His hand. Man could not have done it. Man could not have ripped that thick veil that was there. But God reached down and from the top to the bottom, He rented in twain. You know why? Because you know who the veil now is? Jesus Christ, my Lord and my Savior. I don't have to go to the temple. I don't have to come to the church house. I can be driving down the road and have a burden so heavy, have a load that is so hard to bear. I can be at home at night all by myself when it seems like nobody cares and nobody's around. And I can begin to enter in through the veil, through Jesus Christ my Lord, and enter in by the gate right into the very presence of God Almighty. And there have a presence with the Creator of the heavens and the earth and speak with Him, and through His Spirit, Him speak to me. Oh, how blessed we are. Oh, how privileged we are. My, why do we fail? Why do we fail to use that day in and day out? Christ willingly went to the cross, and there He was delivered up. He took my sins, and He took your sins, and He nailed them to cross. The songwriter wrote, hold a debt I could not pay. He paid a debt he did not owe. I needed someone to wash my sins away. I'm going to close 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. (laughs) Glory to God. Father, I praise you this morning. Lord, I worship you this morning. What a mighty God. First, let me get to where I'm supposed to be. First Peter, chapter 1 and verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy have begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in this last time. How blessed. Did you hear what an inheritance we have? It is incorruptible. It is undefiled. It will not fade away. It is reserved in the heavens for me. As we read in the book of Romans, and I'm closing. He says, He that spared not his son. There's a song that says, He did it all for me. I'm so thankful He did it all for me. And if He was willing to give His Son to pay for my sins, why do I think that He will not also with Him freely give me all things? I don't have to worry about tomorrow. Brother Josh, I don't know what's coming tomorrow. I don't know what's coming this week. I don't know what's going to take place. But I know who's am and I know he has never forsaken me and his hand will be there for me Father whew, glory Lord I love you this morning 
I thank you this morning, God, that you was delivered up. Lord Jesus, that you was delivered up for me. As unworthy, as undeserving as I am, yet you love me and gave yourself for me. I thank you for that this morning. I pray, Lord, if there's one here, one who is listening, one who will listen later, that does not have the assurance of their salvation. Lord, they'll not let this day go by. I pray, Lord, if they don't have that blessed hope as an anchor of their soul, that this day they'll make their calling and election sure. For, Lord, I believe your coming is so near and so close. Now, Lord, I pray that you touch your people and help us to see, God, that you haven't begun a good work in us. We'll perform it. We'll complete it. We'll bring it to pass against that day. Lord, you'll make ways where there seem to be no ways. And I thank you for that. I wonder this morning, there's one here this morning who does not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Should Christ step out on the clouds of glory, and He could, at this moment, are you prepared? Will you hear His call? Has your name been written in the Lamb's book of life? By faith, have you reached out and received the forgiveness of your sins and believed in the finished work of the cross? Today's your day. Today's your day. How about it? Quickly. Step out from that pew right now. Come forward and believe Him. Receive Him for the forgiveness of your sins. Quickly. I want us to stand for just a moment. Father, as we stand in your presence this morning, you know every heart, you know every life. Lord, if that individual's here that is not prepared, I pray, God, don't let this day, don't let this day go by without that your Spirit draws them unto you, Lord. I pray for those, Lord, that are saved and prepared. You know how the devil fights them. You know how he comes against them. Let them know right now that your grace and your mercy is sufficient. Let them know right now, God, that you'll make ways where there seem to be no ways and that your hand will be upon them. Help us to ever cling, to ever cling to the cross for salvation, for sanctification, for day by day living. It is the cross and no other way. It is the cross that is our victory. And I thank you for that. I'm so glad that right now you're risen. You're not in the tomb. You're at the right hand of the Father as our intercessor. And I know, I know you hear our prayers. And I thank you for it this morning. In Jesus' name. Can you reach right over there, that individual's next to you? And can we pray one for another for just a moment?